As I mentioned at the outset, today we celebrate this beautiful feast day of Our Lady of Fatima. During the time of World War I, which was a scale of violence, new instruments of war had been developed that created more killing than could ever have imagined. And as we know from history, so many nations were all involved in that conflict. Pope Benedict XV had, in a very special way, prayed to our Blessed Mother for peace, for an end to all of this hostility. And it was during that time of World War I that Our Lady appeared in Fatima. And there have been all kinds of speculations about the message that Mary left and its various meanings and all that. But I'd like to just focus on two important things about Our Lady of Fatima and then say something about the Gospel. But the first is that, in essence, Our Lady's message at Fatima was pray. If you want peace, pray. If you want an end to violence, pray. For all the good things in the world you want, for everything uh, that is good for those we need and for those we love, pray. Mary promises us that she is hearing our prayers. And of course, the rosary is our most beautiful and intimate way of both connecting with our Blessed Mother and meditating upon the mysteries of Jesus' uh, life, passion, and resurrection. Now, one other fact which is um, well known to many of us who are old enough to have lived through the period, but perhaps not as well known to you who are younger, is that when, uh, in 1981, when our then Holy Father, now Pope St. John Paul II, was shot, when there was an attempted assassination of him, he has always believed that it was Our Lady of Fatima that saved him from death. His injuries were serious, and he was hospitalized for some time. But finally, when he was healthy and well enough, John Paul II visited the shrine at Fatima, and he actually had the bullet that had gone through his body and caused so much damage. Uh, he placed it in the crown of the statue of Mary, uh, where it remains to this day. I'd like to say something also about today's gospel. We're coming to the part, we are in the part of the gospel, where Jesus is preparing his disciples to leave them to take his leave to return to the Father. And he realizes that he has to prepare them for the difficulties and the challenges that they will face as they go about the business of building the church as we know it now, spreading the gospel, spreading the good news. And so it would be nice, wouldn't it, for us to think that the good, anyone who does what is right, who says what is right, will be easily recognized for that, that their goodness will be appreciated, and that almost everyone will follow them, right? Wouldn't that be ideal? But the sad reality is that sometimes the good, the righteous, and the just are not only ignored, but sometimes even worse, they are persecuted. And that is the message that Jesus is imparting on them. He is telling his disciples, be prepared for persecution. Discipleship is worth it. Your relationship with me is worth it. Being faithful to the gospel sometimes extracts a heavy cost. And so he gives us that line, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. And we know, sadly, throughout the two millennia of the church's history, there have been countless numbers of martyrs, brave men and women who have stood up for what was right, even against the popular tide. And some have paid the price of being unpopular, of being ridiculed, of being shunned. And some, sadly, have paid the price with their lives. Our parish school is St. John the Evangelist School. Our parish in Canton that sponsors the school is St. Oscar Romero Parish. And that is because in uh, 2021, Canton's two parishes, 
then St. John the Evangelist, and then St. Gerard Magell emerged. And when we merged into a single parish, we chose as our new patron saint for our new merged parish, St. Oscar Romero. And Oscar Romero, a saint of our times, who was killed in 1980, uh, was martyred in 1980, was someone who displayed the courage about which Jesus speaks in today's gospel. In El Salvador at the time, uh, Oscar Romero was the Archbishop of San Salvador, there was tremendous inequality and just injustice in his land. The poor, in a very special way, the uh, indigenous uh, people who worked the land, who worked the farms, were denied a fair economic share for their labors and they were de denied political rights by a military regime. And he spoke up for them and against them. And ultimately, even to the point Romero's friends were warning him, tone down the rhetoric, they're coming after you. And he said, I can't. I must be faithful to my role as priest and bishop, as shepherd of these people. And he was assassinated while celebrating the holy sacrifice of the Mass. He heard the words of Jesus in today's gospel. He knew that persecution might be a price to pay for discipleship, but he trusted in Jesus' promise. And so too, we are encouraged to follow that example.